Hello ladies, hello everyone. It is May and we're going to do a flower tutorial and this is a really nice tattered flower tutorial that I have made and I'm going to put a little bit of glue here because I see it needs it. Um, using, um, this is not this is a cheesecloth, not a cheesecloth, but it's like a gauze fabric and I cut it up into four inch squares and this is an old curtain. Um, that I cut up into three inch squares and then um, this is um, another piece of a gauze but it's different from this one. This one's a little bit different. See the difference? This is how it originally looked like. I kind of um, did a coffee dye on it um, but this is what it looked like before I coffee dyed it and distressed it. So this is the four inch here um, and then this is like it's like a cheesecloth gauze, but it's a little bit different if you can see the differences. So um, we use that. And then I use um, from the Austin Real Resale Shop, um, I got some of those strips of uh, sample fabrics. And I cut them into strips and I did that around there. And then this is a piece of satin from one of the kits that I had leftover pieces of satin and I made into a little flower bundle and then of course these are um, little tassels of strips of um, leftover pieces of things that I have laying around. Alright so the first thing that I'm going to do is what I did is I took the um, fabric that was, um, you can buy this at Joann's, um, I bought it at the Austin Creative Resale Shop um, and I cut into little strips of about three inches and that's what you see here um, and I I just take the fabric fold it up into um, you know from the bolt and then just cut it out into strips like that and then I cut it into little squares so that's how I do that and so it comes in like this and I'll show you so with my rotary cutter I fold it up like this and little bundles like this and then I take it on my cutting mat um, that way I can get strips cut in my rotary cutter um, I'll fold it like that and then I'll put it up to my cutting mat and I put my uh, cutting ruler and then I use my rotary and just keep cutting it like that in strips so that I get these long strips that I just showed you all right um, and then I did the same the same technique with the curtain um, it is a curtain and you can check your thrift stores there's a lot of lace there um, for flowers and I just cut up, up into little strips and and then I cut them into little squares these are about three inch by two and a half inch probably and um, this is a piece of satin that I had left over from one of my kits um, and then these is the fabric samples that I picked up from the Austin Creative Store. I cut them into little strips, sewed down the sides, and then you just can take and cut little, make sure you don't go into the sewing line, and just cut little things like that. And I'll just keep doing that to get to the end. Doesn't matter. Um, don't sit there, just cut, cut, you know, just as long as you don't get into the sewing line. And leave about an eighth of an inch or so from that sewing line. And do that all the way across. No rhyme or reason how. And then on this last piece, I cut it off because that's got the um, sewing stitch from the serger from the factory. And then I have all these little strips. This is a strip of an eyelet fabric that I used the other day. I had them left over. I cut into little strips like that and we'll make tassels. And here's more of the cheesecloth cut into like two and a half by two. And of course you're going to need bling, um, a piece of felt, and I'm going to probably use um, some of this cotton thread to make some, um, and I'm just going to do move this so that way I have my tassels all the way the same length. So I'm just going to take this piece of cotton thread and I'm just going to 
Let's see if I got it right. Just kind of wrap it around so that I can get, um, you might want to take a piece of tape, tape down one end so it doesn't come undone. Okay, and just keep wrapping that around. That way you have um, the end and, and you can cut one end and then that way it's all evened out, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to release some more of this. And that's pretty cool. And sometimes I take the chipboard and I'll um, get a piece of chipboard and do this, but this is cool that you can do this with this. With the Deco Fun Foam Maker. Oh, cool, cool. All right. And when I do these kind of flowers, you want to have plenty, um, if you, you know, to do several. So what I do is I just cut, 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 have it all stacked up, and then I can just keep making and um, keep rolling with that. And you're going to need a candle or a lighter. I prefer a candle because um, I don't like getting burnt with a lighter. All right. So once you have that, you can just kind of. Tape one in and okay, now this in here. We're going to take this in here. We're going to cut it. That, that, and right smack in the center. There we go. See? So we can use that for strips on our flowers for tassels. And I can also use it to tie up some of my um, flowers. So I want to go ahead and step two of these because I'm going to need that for that flower. Okay, so let's get rocking and rolling. Um, I did try the little um, fork um, to do, actually I did it to make these flowers. Um, Elizabeth Benavides, I saw her technique on how to do this. She uses a bobby pin. I didn't have a bobby pin, so I took this fork. So thank you, um, Elizabeth, for that idea. But I used the fork to make this pretty little flower that she makes. So that is an idea from her. And I'm going to use some little crocheted doily and stuff that I have. Um... So let's get some doilies out here. And I have all these little doilies that I use. And of course, you're going to need your candle. Let's see what doilies I have. See if we can play with some doilies. Okay. All right. So I got different styles of doilies and whatnots. Okay. And. We'll just put those there. There's my candle. Let me light it up. And I'll, you're really going to need this only for the satin. Um, and the way Elizabeth did it is she took her satin or her piece of fabric. She took a piece of fabric. It wasn't satin. I don't, the one that I watched, it was just a piece of satin that she got from a piece of fabric from a curtain. So you just keep folding it. And this strip here, I'm going to tell you what size this is. And this is a leftover from one of my kits. So 12, I would say about 16 inches. I hate this little ruler. I can never figure out which way it goes. Okay, yep, 16 inches long. All right, so um, just keep folding it. And it is three inches wide. So six, three inches by 16 inches. And I'm just going to fold it like that. Okay, and I'm going to make like an oval cut on the top and on the bottom. Okay, and then you're going to take this and you should get um, eight squares in here or eight little 
ovals, not squares, like that. And you can run it through your, your um, candle to get them to curl up. The first one's a little, um, I do one side and then I'll do the other side. You can get a little burnt. But once you do the first one, I just kind of hold, it's easier. Just like that. And you'll see it's starting to curl. And I wish I can zoom in so you can see this, but I, I can't get this camera to zoom in. <laughs> All right, so once it curls, you'll do the other side, and it's easy if you do one side and then the other side. I like it They're really nice and curled up. You don't want to get too close to the flames so that you don't um, get burnt edges unless you want it really tattered and shabby. All right. So yeah, you want to cut everything, and I want to put that aside, because I'm not going to be needing that one for a while. So you want to have everything cut up and into um, laying out so you can just keep building. Um, so once you have this, I use a piece of this little thread. I put it in between the two center pieces of the fork, like that. I grab this little rose petal and just keep putting it in. You can do a running stitch. One of them I did in a running stitch, but that that in its nutshell will take forever to keep threading. All right, so once you have it like that, I take one, so I know that this one's going to be on this side of my flower. And then this thread, I'm going to wrap it around and bring it back to the front here. All right. And then you're going to make a small knot and then pull it out, kind of adjust it to make sure it's in the center there a little bit. And then you can just wrap around to get a nice tight fit in there and then just tie it off. Okay. And once you tie it off, you can take these pieces off, cut it off. So out of that three by 16 inch, you can make two flower centers. And then just kind of pull it together get your petals all straightened out and you know however you want it pull and tuck you know okay All right, so then you'll get something shabby and crazy like that. And I like crazy. You guys know I like crazy. You get something crazy like that. And that is your flower. So I've had all those done. And then, of course, you have another one. So from that 3 by 16, you have enough to make two flowers. All right, so I'm going to move all that aside here. Let's get the little roller here. I know I'm going to have more lint come in here. Okay, so now let's build the flower. So the first thing that you're going to do, I'm going to take this little square, and this um, one here, I'll be three by two and a quarter. And I just fold it in a little, you got one corner here, triangle, triangle, fold it that way, fold it to the back. Put a bit of glue in here, some in between this one, a dab of it there and down. And we got to make sure we have our handy dandy fingers for this because you're going to get some massive burns. Grab another one 
And you can distress this. What I did to get it more distressed and shabbied up and tattered, I um, after I put the coffee, um, I ran it through the dryer. I put it all in a pillowcase, and that way it got more tattered. Um, and you can just kind of fray it up more and get more, you know, more of those fibers and threads out and tatter it up more. So again, fold, fold, and to the back. And then you're just going to fill in those little spots. And just keep doing that and building your flower and fold, fold to the back. And it doesn't have to be so perfect, ladies, because the last thing you want to do is spend a whole lot of time making these flowers. These should be a no-brainer. Um, and you can just, you know, sit down watching TV one night um, with your family and just put them together. Um, as long as you have everything cut out, the best thing that I suggest is cut it all out and have it all lined up and just sit down and make your flowers. So again, they don't have to be so perfect. Um, we're not going for perfect and we're actually going for shabbiness. All right. Yeah, you just fill in the, the little spots. You can distress it a little more. You know, do whatever you want. Get it all nice and distressed. You can add another little layer, like of a, a doily. You can come in with some of this gauze that we've cut up into little strips. Where did I cut that one? Right here. Again. Just cut them up into little strips. Make your little square patches front, back, and notice they're not perfect. Um, it is, it is what it is, ladies. You know. Oop, let me put that doily. And one there. One across from it. Notice I'm not even I'm not even going to try to be perfect with these because you know it is like a cheese cloth gauze kind of thing and it's not even perfect you know but it gives it that uniqueness that we want you know even even with it being so roughed up the way it is it gives it really nice uniqueness and I like that so one across from each other and then you just keep filling in. And I did put a little bit of vanilla to take away some of the coffee smell, and it worked great. Although I don't mind the coffee smell. But see if you build, if you cut it up, it'll be it'll go faster. It just does. And you can just build, build, build until you have that desired look that you want. Yeah. Can't really see that little doily in there, but all right, so then I'm gonna take some of this one and I'm gonna do the same thing, front, back. And these are the curtains. I'm going to go in between the two petals. I'm going to 
does kind of get you get a lot of glue webs. So just be on the lookout for those glue webs that seem to be endless. Look at that. The endless crazy glue webs. Maybe it'll help if I move some of my fabric away from the glue gun. See, if you just keep building it and making it more shabbier and shabbier and it looks so luscious. At least I think. And I like the distressed look of, you know, coffee dyeing in or tea dyeing in or, you know, just gives it that nice look. Okay. Dab it there, dab there, and there we go. And you can just make flowers of whatever you have, right? All right, so now we have that going on. Now I'm going to take this here and I distressed it and I might not need the whole bit but I'm going to go around a little and kind of pleat it in and there's some glue in there still so it was kind of sticking so pleat it in just a little go around and I'm going to show you something else I did so that the pleats a lot easier. So let me finish off here and then I'll show you on that other piece that I have laying on my desk. Because if you don't do that one step, you're not going to get a good rotation on this. Okay. All right. So that's a little extra. We're going to trim that one off. Okay, turn that off right there. And I like to put my, kind of get it nice and fluffy in there. All right, so now you have that. Okay, now what you can do is you can grab one of these little doilies, put it right there, and then you can take your little flower and pat it in there like that. And that's what we're going to do. And pull that in there, kind of straighten out those little petals. While that glue, glue is hot, that's when you want to do that. Okay. And then grab your centerpiece and put it in there. You can put some of those fibers that are lingering around. Look at that. Isn't that luscious? All right. Now, for the tassel, what we're going to do, these are little random pieces. We have that one. Grab a couple of these because these are really cheap and affordable. We can get a whole little strip of that. I'm going to grab some of that. That. This is a one that I had too. These are vintage from a vintage lot that I had, so we're going to grab some of that. And we have this. These are all lots that I pick up on eBay. The little vintage lots. That's cute. Look at that. Perfect for this. Some of that. And grab a little piece of tape in here. I felt it somewhere. Right here at the end. Get it all nice and um, well or organized and then grab a piece of your yarn or let's see what do we want. Oh, we can grab some seam binding too, but I'm going to do a flower with the seam binding. Let's grab some of this one. And just tie it off. I 
doesn't have to be so perfect. I mean, if you want perfect, you can trim some of that off. You know, and okay, and now lift in here, one of the spots, wherever you can lift up. Tuck that in there. And then that's your shabby chic flower. Let's get some glue. You want to make sure that one side is not so, um, so you can tuck in your tassel. Which is what we just did here. Use that, tuck it in. Okay, and there we go. We have a cute little shabby chic tassel flower um, that you can make using scraps. Um, you know, go to your thrift store, see what you find. If you have like a creative resale shop, which is where people donate stuff. Um, that they have like pieces of fabric and things like that. Um, I would check that out because that's an awesome place to go get some stuff for this kind of stuff. Um, and it's very, very, very easy to create a lovely little flower. Anyway, that is the tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Oh, I do want to show you something. Okay, so this is what um, I was telling you guys, the secret to this. Um, you can take and let's do that let's do a quick little flower hold on sorry where are my all right you're gonna see where the sewing stitch is the line you're gonna snip just a little bit leave don't get too close to that to that um stitch but you want to make sure that you kind of get these little corners as well, these little edges trimmed so that you can turn, twist, you know, and it's easier. Instead of rolling this up, I've done a tutorial where I had a trim when I only created the details that was almost like this. Um, and it was like a little trim similar to this. Um, and I rolled it up. Um, but you can get a letter, a better, better flatter um, if you do it this way. Um, on the other one, I couldn't do this because of the type of the trim it was. But if you go all the way across and just kind of snip it a little. And I'll see. Let's find my little. I know I had it here. But I don't know where it went. Where did it go? Okay, let's get. Looks like I must have. I must have a little. All right, so it's kind of rough. I get it all shabbied up, just like we would. I cut myself, just like we would if we were doing seam binding. Get it all nice and shabby. Look at that. Look, and that luscious. I love it. Look, that is from. This is that strip, and I think Maria might have some of this. But look. You get this from this, um, and look how luscious that looks. All right, so you can take, I cut myself earlier, um, say your little circle, and you can start at the bottom. Let's do that. Put a little... And because you've cut those now, it'll move around more easy. But you can just go around like that. See that? Okay. Then I'm going to pile it up here and trim off the extra. 
see if you did that. Now, if you didn't, I want to show you. If you didn't, see how luscious that looks. Okay. If you didn't do that, I'll show you the difference. All right. So say I was to snip this one off. Trying to get all the way across, ladies. Oh, let's snap that off. Because that will, it's got the serger sewing stitch. All right, so say, um, oh, my daughter put a piece of Band-Aid on me and it's coming off, all right. Say uh, you wanted to now do this around there. See that? I didn't snip that one in. Um, but look, it's a lot harder. You're not. You're gonna have to do bigger pleats. See that? It doesn't come out as smoothly as this because we snipped it. See that? So you're gonna have to pleat it yourself to get that. So I strongly recommend to go where that sewing stitch is and just make little snippets here and there. Avoiding that sewing stitch as much as you can so that you can get um, it to maneuver around circles and shapes better. So snip, snip, snip all the way across and they'll make it a lot easier on you. I'll guarantee you. Then rolling it up. Okay. So I'll make it a lot easier now if I was to sit here and do that. It makes it easier because we have those small little miters and it's just, they pile in better. See that? Okay. So I could probably do that there. But so that is that, ladies. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, until next time, bye bye, ladies.